minus 1, 6. And the slope of the line xc is 1, 7. So x to c, this line here, has a slope of 1 over 7. Okay. Find the equation of xc. Give your answer in the form ax plus by plus c. Well, xc is a line. So we're finding an equation of a line. Equation line is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Now, we know a point on the line. We know the point x. So that can be our x1, y1. We know the slope is 1 7. So it's going to be 1 7. And it's going to be x. Now, minus x1 is going to be minus minus 1. It's going to be plus 1. y is 6. So it's going to be y minus 6. We're going to multiply across the 7. And we're going to get 7y minus 42 equals x plus 1. And then we're going to move it all to one side, and we're going to get minus 1x plus 7y. Bring the 1 over the other side, and we're going to get minus 43 equals 0. Uh, another version of that answer could be the minus 1 version, where you multiply both sides by minus 1. And in which case, you get this answer here. Now, once again, either answer is accessible. Check your marking scheme and move on. Now, C is the center of the circle as shown of radius 5. The line 3x plus 4y minus 21 is a tangent to s and passes through x as shown. Okay. Find the equation of this circle. Okay. Now, now, now. Okay, I think we're looking at some. We're going to have to accumulate this information here and think about what we're going to do. Alrighty. So, this equation here, okay, what I'm thinking is, the first thing I'm thinking we're going to do is we're given the radius and we're given a line, the equation of a line that's a tangent to it. Okay, so what I'm thinking we do is I'm thinking we use the d equals ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, I'm more or less just guessing this at the moment. It just seems like it fits. That's your x1, y1. Your a, b, and c, a is 3, b is 4, and c is minus 21. And you have an r value or d value of 5. So it seems like it ticks off a lot of the boxes. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and start off with anyway. So D is 5. And we're going to get a 3 times uh, our X1 value, which is minus G. And then it's uh, B is going to be uh, 4 times Y1. Y1 is minus F. Okay, and it's the absolute value of all this. And C value is minus 21, all over the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, now put that into the calculator and we're going to get 5 equals to, that's going to be minus 3g, minus 4f, minus 21, all over, uh, what's that, the square root, uh, that's going to be 5. It's going to be the square root of 25, which is 5. I'm going to cross multiply the 5 by the 5 to get 25. And I'm going to stop there. Now, if I was to square both sides out, squaring both sides out would be a lot of work. And a lot of people would do that. It would make sense. Now, I'm realizing there's two variables. There's a two, two letters, and there's only one equation. Traditionally speaking, when you have two letters, it's usually a simultaneous equation. Or it can be a simultaneous equation, one linear, one quadratic. So I'm looking for another equation that I can get G and F from. Now, what I realize is that the part answering part A, X and C are members of this line here. So if I replace X with minus G and, and Y with minus F, it has to balance. So I replace X with minus G going to replace y with minus f and then we have plus 43 equals zero and then lo and behold we're going to get a minus g 
plus 7f plus 43 equals 0. And then what we're going to do next is I'm going to isolate one of these letters. I think I'll isolate G, move G to your side. So I'm going to get 7f plus 43 equals G. And this, I'm looking at minus 3G right here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 3. I'm going to get minus 21F. Uh, 3 times 43 is minus 129. I'm going to lock that in here. So it's going to be 25 equals minus 3G, which is now minus 21F, minus 129, minus 4F, minus 21. And then we're going to get 25 equals the square root of 21 minus, uh, minus 4f. Is that's minus 25, isn't it? So that's minus, that is minus 25f. Uh, minus 129 minus 21 is minus 150. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to square out both sides initially. So square out 25 by 25, and I'm going to get 625. I'm also going to square out minus. Okay. So we're going to do, so it's going to be minus 25F minus 150 times another minus 25F minus 150, okay? So we know that 25 times 25 is 625 F squared. We're then going to have uh, 25 times 150. Now, there was a much smarter, quicker way doing this, but I just don't think it's worth the risk. And then we have two of these. And then we have 150 by 150. And that's 22,500. Now, uh, I'm sort of interested in, I think every, I think both sides are going to be divisible by 625. So I'm going to divide everything by 625. 625 divided by 625 is 1. 625 x squared divided by 625 is x, x squared. 3750 divided by 625 is 6. And that's another 6f there. And finally, the 2. 222,500 divided by 625 is 36. So that came out a lot more convenient. So then we're going to get uh, 0 equals f squared plus 12f plus 35 equals 0. And then we're just going to get uh, f plus 5 and f plus 7. And two f values in question. f is going to equal minus 5 and uh, f is going to equal minus 7. Okay. Now, that will bring us to the g answers. So I'm going to grab this here and find my two g answers. U and U. Okay, we're going to bring this down. At this stage, I should probably verify that my F answers are correct before I commit too much. Yep. Now, does it mention anything about what quadrant it's in or anything like that? Um, we got two answers for F. All answers are acceptable, okay? Now we're going to find the two G answers now. So we're going to get G equals 7 times F plus 43. And then G equals 7 times minus 7 plus 43. Okay, so the first G answer, I think, is going to be 8. So G is 8. And the second F answer will be 6. Or is it minus 8? Yeah. And 
this one is just an answer of minus 49 and yeah, g is minus 6. Okay, now please remember the centers of circle are minus g minus f. So if one of them has a center of minus 8 and 5, the other one has a center of 6, 7. Remember that the radius is 5, I believe. Radius is 5. Okay. And then I'm actually going to switch from the GF because I don't really want to work out the C values. You could work out the C values using the R equals uh, G squared plus F squared minus C. And you could, you could use the then X squared plus Y squared plus 2GX plus 2FY plus C to get the two answers. I'm going to convert to X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared just because it's quicker. No other reason. And here's what happens here. This is my HK value. So it's going to be X and now H is minus 8. So it's going to be minus minus 8, which is plus 8. And then y minus k, so it's going to be y minus 5 squared, r squared equals 25. And then on the next one, it's going to be x minus 6 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 25. So that's the two answers to this question here, which is a question 2 on 2016.